Hello, my name is Jimmy Dominique. I'm a VoIP support engineer here at DIT Logic. Today I'm recording this video from our New York City office and we'll, we'll be discussing how to configure an asterisk based uh, PBX to connect to our DID Logic SIP trunk. So we'll go ahead and jump right in. A lot of the instructions that we'll be going over today is, are available at our website, didlogic.com. If you go over to the setup tab and then click on asterisk space, you'll be able to get the written step-by-step -step, uh, instructions as well. Um, we'll always want to start off by logging into the DID Logic portal just to make sure everything is in order there, the proper credentials have been set up. So we'll go ahead and log in now. Okay, now that we're logged into our test account here at uh, DID Logic, uh, we do want to first go into the DID Logic portal and make sure that we have credentials set up, DID purchased for use for our testing and configuring of our asterisk space PBX. Go to the SIP tab and click on create SIP account. Go ahead and give it a name, whatever fits. And you do want to give it a complex password. All right, now that we see that the SIP device has been, uh, that the SIP account has been created in the DID Logic portal, that the DID has been purchased, and that the destination for the DID has been connected to the SIP account, and that the SIP account caller ID has also been set to that same DID. So both the inbound and the outbound should work fine in this case. So what we'll do next is now focus on actually configuring the asterisk base PBX. So uh, like I said before, uh, we're using an asterisk base PBX. Uh, asterisk is an open source software. Uh, there are several popular distributions of the asterisk base. I happen to be using free PBX for the purpose of this demonstration, uh, but they have a similar feel and setup. So this should apply to all asterisk space configurations. So first we'll first off we'll want to go ahead and configure our trunk. And this is what's going to allow us to send outbound calls and also establish that connection so that inbound calls can also route back into our PBX. So we'll go ahead add a new trunk We'll go ahead and fudge and zip. So you can go ahead and name your trunk uh, whatever you like. I'm gonna go ahead and call this trunk DID Logic. Uh, this hide DID caller ID settings. Uh, I'm, gonna, gonna, I'm not going to hide our caller ID. This is in case you are interested in calling anonymously. Um, we do recommend that you, you do purchase a DID. And, um, it's just uh, in general better. You'll get a better performance out of your DID. The outbound caller ID, so we had already picked the uh, 1646 809 And I do believe it has to be in the, okay. It has to be in this format. All right, maximum channels. I'm going to ahead, go ahead and make this two. Uh, you do, for testing purposes, when you're initially setting up, you don't want to have too many channels uh, just in case your, your PBX has been compromised early on. Like a lot of the passwords are not as secure right when you're first setting it up. So just to start off low and then increase and then retest as you increase. You'll also want to if you ever need to change how many, however many channels you need to have on your PBX, uh, just reach out to support at didlogic.com and we'd be uh, happy to make adjustments to, to that for you as well. For the rest of these settings, they should, uh, the default should be fine for our purposes. So again, for your own specific needs um, and business cases, they're, there will be cases to where you might want to go deeply into uh, many of these settings. 
Um, today we're just doing a very simple business case. Um, the PBX, even though we're not gonna be using, it's gonna be very similar setup to just doing a, a simple soft phone, but with a PBX with a couple of, couple of functionality add-ons with the PBX. So. so next we will go to the, the dial number manipulation rules. And these can get, can get very complex in terms of where you're calling to, what, what countries, what country codes, how your user population, people who use the phones in, in your organization, how they dial and how you might wanna adjust to that, to that dialing. In uh, different locations, you'll have, people are used to dialing in different ways. Um, for our purposes, we are going to be more or less putting putting in XX period as our dial plan. Basically what this will do is we'll accept all all the numbers and we'll just allow allow them all to come in. And so in order for the ID logic to process, process your calls properly, you'll have to make sure you use the appropriate dialed number manipulation rules in order so that we will receive them in E.164 format. And uh, well, we'll we'll go ahead and link uh, some more information on E.164 format in, in the video as well. Then we'll actually go ahead and go into the trunk settings. So we'll go ahead and make the trunk name DID logic. The host would be the the fully qualified domain name of the proxy that you're trying to reach on the DID logic website. After you've logged in, there is a listing of all our proxies. So you would just use the proxy that is closest to you. Okay, so the username, just like in the case with the soft phone, the username would be the SIP username right here. So in our case, 31732. The secret, which I have previously set up, is the password that you would have set up when you want to go create the, the SIP account here. Again, these are temporary credentials that won't work during the time that this video is viewed. But you do want to try to make your passwords uh, uh, complex so that they are more difficult to, to breach. Um, we're gonna go ahead and add in some additional fields to the peer details here. So we do have the host. We're gonna go ahead and add in the user field as well which will also be the same, 31732. We're gonna add in a field from user, which will also be 31732. And we'll also add in a field called auth name. which will also be 37, uh, 31, 7, 32. All right, so we'll have the secret, then we'll add in the field insecure is equal to port comma invite. We'll go ahead and switch type peer to friend. Go ahead and add a qualify field. And make that equal to yes. Add a disallow. And allow U law. As well as A law. After putting in the peer details, you do want to visually double check because any slight misspelling 
will cause the the registration process to either fail or not not completely function in the way that it should. So we'll just go ahead and take a moment to visually confirm our. And we'll go ahead and submit the changes. In Asterisk Base PBX, oftentimes you'll need to hit the apply config after you submit, hit submit in order for those changes to actually take place. But I am actually just going to. Uh, here it's giving us a warning that this trunk will not actually be used until we have set up a route uh, in the outbound route. So that actually is the next step that we are going to, to do. We'll go ahead and apply the config. There actually is one more setting that I do want to cover. So we'll just do that quick. Um, here we do also want to set up the inbound. Since we're already here, we'll go ahead and set up. So different people have different approaches in terms of whether they want to set the outbound first or do everything all at once or set up the inbound first. Um, we'll, we'll leave that up to your own personal preference. But when you are, uh, since we are here, I'm just going to go ahead and add in the registration string for the incoming details to handle inbound calls. So for the registration string, if we actually go back, it will show us the the format that the registration string should take, which is your SIP account, colon, your password, at the proxy address, slash the DID that you're registering to. So in our case, it's 31732 colon our password. Sip. that as well and apply the config. So that should be the the trunk settings used. At this point, uh, we're gonna move on to the outbound route in a moment, but what I'll quickly do as well, just to give ourselves a little peace of mind, we can also log into the asterisk command line in order to confirm that the trunk settings were, were in fact uh, are working. So we'll go ahead and do that as well. We'll go ahead and SSH into this asterisk server and put in our admin password here. Then we'll log into the asterisk mode. All right, and from here, if we put in the commands SIP, highlight this here. Well, I had a previous debug here. Let me turn off the debug. There we go. All right, so if we put it in SIP show peers, you can see clearly here that we do have the DID logic. This is the IP of the New York City proxy for DID logic. And that we're also getting status okay. So, so far we're looking good. So I'll go ahead and minimize that. And we'll go ahead and proceed to the outbound rounds. So. 